This work, uh, I'll try to uh, explain two aspects of. First of all, I'll, I'll give the, the mathematical framework that we are going to to show some uh, simulations of experiments that in the literature and uh, also experiments that we are trying to do, and uh, it's a, a great effort to 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 do these kind of ex experiments in lab in, at our university. So this, this mathematical framework was proposed by myself and my uh, Professor Antonio Jens at Technical University of, of Catalonia and Marcelo Sanchez that just presented the thermohydromechanical aspect of this formulation. And uh, I will introduce the, some aspects related to the solution and precipitation of minerals in, in rocks, in carbonate rocks mainly. So uh, the, the outline of the presentation is I, I, I will give a brief introduction, the motivation of the problem, uh, the formulation, uh, the thermohydromechanical formulation previous presented in the reactive transport problem, some experiments in synthetic samples, uh, synthetic because uh, it's easier to control because of the repeatability. We are using samples that we build with high porosity and permeability. It's easier to, to make the experiments and uh, uh, well, we're going to show the, the... And the, of course, ongoing and future work, we are now in a process to begin to work is with natural rocks. Now we have equipment for that and uh, we are, I'm showing the, the initial, uh, some aspects of this, this, this work and then conclusions. So the, the motivation is the, is the pre-salt reservoirs and there are some challenges related to this reservoir. This is, there are more than this, I'm sure. But one of the aspects is, this, is the CO2 injection. CO2 injection in a uh, walk uh, strategy, so it's water alternate gas. So we have some mixture of CO2 and water. So we have water uh, acidification, we have some carbonic uh, acid. Sorry. Oops. Uh, some, some water acidification and then uh, near the injector we can have some uh, dissolution, and we are trying to 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 study this dissolution not only in the hydrochemical aspects but also the effect of this dissolution on the geomechanical behavior. That's the called water weakening. So we have loss of mineral in the porous matrix, and it will change not only porosity and permeability but also stiffness and strength of the of the rock. Okay. Uh, so the, the mathematical framework was described by my colleague Marcelo Sanchez. Uh, we have a thermohydromechanical formulation, uh, uh, v very robust, coupled and fully f uh, uh, solved in a fully coupled way. Uh, and we are working with this. We are uh, include coupled with this uh, formulation, directive transport problem, that we have in this problem we have the reactive transport of each one of the species in the, the aqueous phase, but also we have other elements as the chemical equilibrium model for first reactions and the uh, model for reactions in kinetics. Some reactions such as some of the uh, dissolution and precipitation of minerals can be slow in respect to the characteristic times of uh, transport. It's, a, uh, it's always related to transport as we could see in the first presentation by Professor Kintard. So uh, this, this is the, the thermohydromechanical problem presented by Marcelo, and I will, not, I will skip that. And uh, together with these equations, I uh, I will introduce the reactive transport of each one of the aqueous uh, species. So we have here the transport term, that is the total flux, total flow of, of the, the species that we include advection, uh, non-advection, dispersion, and diffusion. And if you have a, a deformable porous media, we, can also, we have also to include the solid velocity. And another, uh, another important uh, element of this formulation is the source sink term due to chemical reactions. 
And chemical reactions here, for us, are the homogeneous reactions, different kinds of homogeneous reactions at, at, at aqueous phase. Uh, we are trying to, we are, we are going to use this one, mainly, and heterogeneous reactions, such, such cation exchange or dissolution for, for argillaceous materials, but also the solution and precipitation of minerals. For all these reactions, we are considering equilibrium, so they are first reactions. But uh, some dissolution and precipitation of, uh, of minerals can be, can be slow, so we are uh, going to consider also the akinetics uh, model. Uh, due, to some, uh, due, to, due to the equilibrium restrictions, we can uh, reduce the, the equations of uh, uh, the number of equations that you have to solve, and we have now a new variable that is the total concentration of a uh, uh, primary species. So this total concentration is the unknown of the, the, uh, the is the unknown of the, the chemical problem. And for instance, the total concentration of calcium is, is the total amount of calcium in the system. It, it can be as a, 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 a cation, a aqueous cation, a, a, a aqueous complex. It can be absorbed by the clay, or also it can be precipitated in a mineral. So uh, in, the, in the equilibrium model, in, uh, the chemical equilibrium model will give the partition of this calcium in the system, so the, the proportion of calcium as a, 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 a ion or as a complex or as an absorbed cation or as a mineral will be given by the uh, chemical equilibrium model. And of course, the aqueous, uh, the, the total aqueous concentration is the concentration of calcium, is the amount of calcium that, that is transported by the uh, aqueous phase. Uh, for uh, slow reactions, we have uh, 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 kinetic model and equilibrium model give different information for the system. Kinetic give explicitly the velocity of the reaction, so we have uh, as a function of surface uh, area, uh, uh, reactive area, uh, temperature, and of course the saturation index of the mineral is respect to the solution. And uh, for the equilibrium model, we have to solve the uh, equilibrium sub-problem, sub that is the, the minimization of Gibbs free energy that will give the partition of the species in the system. So uh, we do this uh, using an algorithm that is based on newton raphson It's a local algorithm using Lagrangian multipliers to incorporate the restric restric restriction of the, of the system. And this, is, this algorithm is very robust for the problem of fr fronts of uh, dissolution and precipitation of minerals that it's, in fact, a uh, 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 moving boundary problem. Uh, okay, uh, so this is this equation this is, was implemented in a finite element code that performs now thermohydromechanical and chemical simulations and porous media. And uh, some aspects of the, this coupling between reactive problem, chemical problem, and thermohydromechanical problems are very important. It's, it's the constitutive part of this, of this uh, modeling. So, uh, for instance, the change of porosity normally is given by the mass conservation of solids. And if we apply the material derivative uh, concept, we have the change of porosity as a function of solid density, or so, uh, solid compressed compressibility, and uh, volumetric deformation. But if we introduce chemical reactions, we have here a, a source term due to the solution and precipitation, and we have also variation of, of, of porosity as a function of the solution and precipitation. So, uh, in fact, we consider this, uh, this term as the variation of total mineral volume, that is the uh, molar volume of the mineral, that is a property of the mineral, multiplied by the concentration of this mineral that comes from the reactive transport problem. So we can relate porosity with total 
mineral volume or concentrations of minerals. And also, if you have a model that relates permeability and porosity, we can have changes of permeability due to concentrations. But it's more complicated ju that just have a model. I know that there are very sophisticated models, but in this kind of problem, I think as an engineer, that's really important to, to perform experiments. You know, in this kind of example, we can have the same amount of minerals precipitated in the porous medium that change equally the porosity, but completely, completely, but we give, it can give completely, permeability, completely different permeability. So the impact of permeability of the concentration of minerals in permeability generally is, is greater than in porosity. So it, it depends on the, the way that mineral will precipitate in the porous medium. So it's really, uh, I think that this point is really necessary to have some experiments. And, and for this reason, in our group, group that my university, we decide to invest in experiments. Of course, but the, it's a very uh, complex problem and we need at certain point to apply, you have to do experiments. It's, impor it's impossible to, to use all these theoretical laws without some validation. So uh, it's more or less recent. It's the first work that we've we, we done. Uh, we have two kinds of experiments there. The first one is, is just hydrochemical experiments in this synthetic carbonate rocks and others. In, 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 in these in this experiments, we expose a carbonate rock to a acid fluid, to a reactive fluid that will change, that will uh, dissolve minerals and change all these parameters. But uh, also we are doing this the same experiment under stress. So we are interested to, to, to have some idea of the, uh, of the impact of the dissolution on the, the formation or on the mechanical behavior of the rock. So uh, this is a this this is a work that was funded initially by CNPq, but funds from from the government, and, and now we have uh, strong support of Petrobras. We are in the uh, in the process of building a rock mechanics lab with this uh, objective to, to check. Uh, the, the influence of chemistry on the behavior of the rock, mechanical behavior of the rock. We are also interested not only in the matrix, but we, we know that there are many aspects related to dissolution and fractures. Fractures is a very important element of the, of the uh, carbonate formation, so we have to consider this. And it's, it's, we have one PhD uh, thesis on this topic at the beginning, so we are very interested in, in, in reproduce the experiments that are in the literature and also with our code, including some elements that were presented by my colleague Marcelo in Fractures. So let's, let's try to do this as, as well. Not now, in the future. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, uh, and we are going to do some modeling, I will show. So the, the idea is to produce experiments and modeling on and validated model. Okay, uh, the first uh, equipment that we developed uh, was uh, uh, acid injection. So we have the, the sample here. The, the, it's a, as, a, uh, as, I saw, as I told you, as I, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a high porosity and permeability impervious uh, uh, artificial rock. And we can see here uh, that we uh, have, for different pHs, the attack of the, of the uh, sample. The permeability is really uh, increased very quickly. We have here, this, this is an extremely uh, uh, acid solution, so we have a, a wormhole. It's not the plan to have wormholes. We, let's, let's think that we are interested in the behavior f a little bit far, far from the injector. So you have, uh, th this is not the objective, we would like to have something like that, so a more, uh, a more stable front, and 
but with increase of permeability on the samples. So we have pH 4, a stable front, very interesting results, increase of permeability, pH 3, and a pH 2. You have some of these wormholes, it's related to the cooler number. And of course, they, in this case, the, 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 the tests were performed with the same hydraulic boundary conditions. The only difference is the, is the, uh, is the reaction that in this, that, that, that the more ag ag aggressive, the more, ag uh, more ag ag aggressive the fluid, higher the Dan cooler number. So, uh, <coughs> okay, and f a first, Let's see uh, the f a first uh, observation on the mechanical properties. We, we have the, the sample that we dissolve some minerals, and what you can see is that in the uh, unconfined compressive uh, strength tests, we have the, the decrease of the uh, strength and also a decrease of the young, uh, young modulus. So we have a degradation of the sample when we of course, we attack the rock. We have now, we, have more, we are performing more, more tests like that, and also we are checking the, the tensile strength that have this a similar behavior. So the tensile strength also, it, it's under preparation, the, but, but we, ha we have these results already. And it is interesting to see that we expect that higher the attack, higher the degradation, and in fact, we could observe this in, in, in sample with pH at, uh, exposed to a solution with pH 4 and 3. Uh, with for pH 3, we have this higher, uh, higher degradation than pH 4. But with pH 2, it's a, a, we have a, a stiffer uh, sample because of the wormhole. The wormhole uh, is a preferential path for the fluid in all these and, uh, and it keeps all this area of the sample. In, uh, it's it's uh, it's this, this, uh, we have a, a higher integrity of the sample besides of this wormhole. Okay, so it's a, a tomographic images of this this test. This is just to illustrate uh, the you can see here the wormhole, and of course it's a it's a it's a just to illustrate some literature that it's a, it's a function of the Dan Cooler number. So higher the Dan Cooler, higher the tendency to form wormholes. And uh, let's, let's use the formulation for, for, for uh, simulate this, this kind of behavior. In fact, uh, we are interested to check the, uh, the, the, the key parameters that affect this behavior. And we know already that it's related to the, the, the velocity of the flow, the, the aggressive of the, of the fluid that you are injecting, but also there are another param parameters. We, we do this simulation. We did this, this simulation with uh, 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 a sample is initially porous, constant porous impermeability in a, a mineral that, that is randomic, randomically distributed. And we consider that law for, poro for porosity as a function of these variables, and including uh, uh, total volume of minerals. And we use this uh, experimental law with this B parameter. So, for instance, we could this, par this B parameter is the, is, the, is the rate of change of permeability as a function of porosity. And this is a very important parameter. Depends on this parameter, we have the warm hole or not. So the, the velocity, the, the impact of, of the mineral dissolution on, on permeability is a, a, another key par parameter that could be affecting, that can affect the, this, this behavior. And in fact, uh, we have here in the sample, this is the dissolution of mineral. You can see the, for, for higher uh, flow injection, we can see the, the wormhole forming. The, this is the, the zero, zero concentration of mineral here. The, the, the reactive mineral disappears here. You can see higher porosity where, where the mineral disappears. And uh, 
okay, this is the concentration of injected fluid. This is the blue one, the, the injected fluid, and the flow that is uh, concentrated in the this uh, high high permeability channel. So, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so let's let's now see what happens with these this, this samples if we apply some stress. In fact, we the, the first uh, well to, to, to do this we include in our mechanical model a new deformation that we call chemoelastic deformation that include uh, uh, this is that is proportional to the total mineral volume. So, and this is a parameter that we can use in experiments. Try to model this. Uh, try to uh, let's say uh, uh, consider this. Uh, uh, obtain this, this this parameter experimentally. So, uh, in, if you can use this this uh, this law for two situations crystal growth or chemical compaction if you have this precipitation or dissolution so i will okay this is, i we have to put this in a, a mechanical constitutive law relating elastic deformations and uh, we I, i'm going to present two two cases one of uh, swelling of the material and another one for compaction of the material in this case it's uh, it's what well, this formulation was applied to to phenomenolo phenomenologically uh, explain some phenomena that was observed in the high-speed uh, highway Madrid Barcelona. In this case, is the is the Lila Tunnel. In this case, we have the the the, the, the excavation of a tunnel in a uh, uh, argillaceous rock with gypsum veins, and in, uh, what happened was that. The atmosphere inside the, this, this gallery, uh, the, the relative humidity inside this gallery uh, um, increases, so you have hydration of this material due to vapor migration. And what happens is that these veins, one of the, one of the there are some um, phenomena that were, we, we uh, study. One of the mechanisms, possible mechanisms, is that these veins, in fact, contains anhydride, and uh, so this anhydride is hydrated by water and uh, expands uh, when it, 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 it is uh, transformed to gypsum. So, uh, so you have it's it was observed that we have a strong swelling of this material. This this was a study. Uh, this material was studied, and uh, this is the, the reason. So, chemical reactions uh, do, does not uh, conserve volume. So, we have anhydride. If you if you if you add two molecules of water, the the molar volume of gypsum is, is higher. So, we have expansion. And uh, so, we did some uh, expert. Uh, we, we did some simulations, and we could. Uh, I, uh, we could uh, model this expansion and it, the, the active zone, you can see that the active zone, it's one of the questions that we have to solve, is about six me meters from the wall, from the, and uh, we have some increase of, of stress, some in, in the heavy. So it's a kind of problem that, this was the first problem that we tried to model this, this phenomenon. Of stress related to to um, to uh, chemical reactions, and it it is published, and there are um, other mechanisms that we are we are also published that uh, that I will not uh, give details here, but you can we can see in the literature. But uh, the other phenomena that I would like to to present is the chemical compaction. In this case. Let's see a test that was proposed initially by Kinen and, and Kinen and Santa Marina. That in this case the, the material is uh, glass spheres and oops, sorry, glass spheres and 
The reactive mineral is sodium chloride. And uh, it is a, a dometer cell that was built. In fact, we, dis we built this kind of model, and we, we perform also these experiments. Initially with this, this material, and now we are doing with our uh, artificial carbonate. But in this, in, this, in this test, we have the simple here. We have the applied uh, of constant vertical stress, and uh, uh, the lateral uh, uh, displacement is constrained. We have a strain gauge here that is able to measure the, the, the uh, horizontal stress, the lateral stress. So what, what's happened when we dissolve this mineral, part of the solid phase, is that we have a volumetric strain, a shrinkage of the sample, but also the lateral stress decrease due to, due to grain mass of, uh, the grain mass loss due to mineral dissolution, but at certain point it increase due to the rearrangement of internal granular structure. So you have some dilation that is related to an inelastic uh, response of this material that we are trying to model as well in a few moments. So we, we use that model to, to, mo to, to induce a, a dissolution front of mineral, and it's, it's for us permeability constant initially, we, we, it is a very stable front, and uh, we, can, we could model the vertical displacement and the decrease of uh, uh, lateral stress. But uh, we tried also to uh, model the considering um, uh, uh, no, no uniform uh, mineral uh, concentration, initial mineral concentration, so we have some dissolution front here, and you can see that uh, near the, where, where the mineral didn't dissolve, you have some concentration of stress, so we have a non-uniform uh, stress in uh, distribution in the sample, and yet we have the dissolution, uh, we have the vertical displacement, and the decrease of lateral stress. Uh, but we, we would like to increase the stresses uh, uh, due to dila dilation. So we incorporate a very simple Mohr Coulomb model. So the stress pass is through the, uh, the Mohr Coulomb envelope, and we have some plastic irreversible deformation due to the, uh, this stress path. So we could capture the increase of the stresses, of the lateral stress, due to this rearrangement, that's an uh, elastoplastic effect. But not enough to reach the, the initial lateral stress, as in the test. So we now introduce a material degradation. So if you have a constant vertical stress, and we introduce a material degradation, so we have this decrease of the uh, stress uh, envelope, and the only way for the horizontal stress is to increase. So we are able to increase this. Uh, it's a mechanism that we are introducing to, to control this. There are more sophisticated models we are working with. Well, well some... some, some uh, Consequence for, for, uh, for instance, at the well and has a four scales that is that the uh, cement dissolution under load can cause uh, chemical induced reservoir compaction and also material degradation. And that will affect well bore, well bore stability, reactivation of faults, and, and so on. Uh, there are other tests uh, in the literature and models based on critical state model that are more sophisticated that can introduce other effects and such as the uh, not only the the loss of strength but also the decreasing of uh, reconsolidation stress when do we have material degradation so we are working we we have published our, our results with this carbonate using this, uh, this, uh, this kind of experiment with uh, our carbonate rock 
uh, uh, using this kind of model and using a bonding, a bonding uh, variable related to the solution of minerals to capture loss of strength and reconsolidation stress. This is the apparatus that we modified from Castellans and Nova that was, that was built uh, very similar to the Chin and Santa Marina that I just presented. So, uh, and regarding our ongoing and future work, uh, we are interested now, we, have, uh, we are now in the position to uh, work in, with natural rock samples. We have a site, it's the, the uh, Grato Formation, that is uh, in, in the Ararit Basin, this is in the northeast uh, uh, region of, of this country. It's close to Juazeiro do Norte and Crato. And this is a very nice tight carbonate analog, analog to the pre-salt in the sense that we have la laminate carbonates with fractures at different scales. So it's a kind of pre... Well, the, 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 this is studied by, by, by our geologists, uh, our, uh, the people at our uh, geology department, and we are doing this work with them to characterize these this, 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 uh, outcrops. And that's very interesting because it's, it's a mining activity, so you have these panels uh, that are moving due to the mining activity. So you have a very good description of the fractures. And it is a kind of pre-karstic environment because you have some dissolution, of, some dissolution of the fractures. We have small, very small uh, karsts and vugs. Sometimes there are some meters, but it's a few, just a few. And it's a very interesting uh, environment to, to study and to, to uh, and really, probably, uh, really close to some uh, has, uh, parts of Presalt Reservoir. And this is the, the finally the conclusions. Uh, uh, well, I presented a, a numerical tool capable to evaluate the integrity of reservoir and cup rocks, and uh, for a number of hydromechanical and hydromechanical and chemical phenomena. Special attention should be paid for the rock fluid chemical interactions. Uh, for instance, mineral concentration, porosity, and permeability couplings may induce preferential path for fluid flow. Consideration of chemical effects requires incorporation of new environmental variable, that is concentration of, of uh, chemical species, a new balance equation, uh, reactive transport equation, and chemical model for account kinetics and chemical equilibrium are required. And as a state variable for the mechanical problem, we use the solid, sol, solid mineral concentrations and th that were able to reproduce the formation uses my me me mechanical, hydraulic, and chemical loads. Mm -hmm.